Welcome back to another page in the book of my life. It is 9.30 on a Sunday morning and I should be hopping in some formal presentable clothing and heading my behind off to church. But I went with the alternative route, which is blasting some pre-workout, listening to some hard style and going ape in the gym. Now that is something that I honestly prefer in this moment. This is the first time in a while that I obligated not to go to church. And that's simply because the way I found God was not through a church. It was my own personal connection going through a dark chapter in my life with a lot of turmoil and a lot of stress and a lot of habit which broke me down and humbled me to where I was receptive to God's message and that's what brought me to God going to church just brought more wisdom and it edified me on God's teachings but after a while some of these churches don't even become about God it's just you being forced or feeling that way to attend their activities or playing stupid ass sports that have nothing to do with God and if you don't attend then they're gonna pray for you and they're gonna be like oh my god the devil has got him what has gotten into this kid he must be demented like there's evil spirits inside of him and it's kind of annoying personally I like to go at my own pace with God. Sometimes I don't feel his connection at all. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't want to talk to him at all. And sometimes I do. And that's just the natural pace that builds the strongest connection for me. And my first go with my faith building process when it came to like outsiders who were trying to come in to build my faith was not the greatest. I was at a Starbucks and I asked some Mormons not knowing that they believed in something else. And well, the Mormons, if you even have an inkling or an ounce of belief inside of your system, it doesn't matter if you meet him in a whole different state or across the world, they will call local people in your area to meet up with you weekly. Hello they get points if they get you baptized so they will bribe you and coerce you into getting baptized and then they'll bring up one scripture in the bible about paying tithes so now you got to pay the church and it's this whole thing where it becomes like an absolute cult and their church isn't even a church it's a temple and listen i'm not saying the people are bad individuals or i didn't enjoy the conversations that we had but it was kind of annoying you feel pressured and you feel obligated to attend literally everything even if it doesn't have to do with jesus you got sport events dance nights and all these things that literally don't even have to do with jesus yet you still gotta attend or else it's like oh like what's going on like we're gonna pray for you and the reason I found God was through myself building that connection with myself and I feel like a church can kind of be that third party that can kind of ruin that you could build a stronger connection by being by yourself because a lot of these people in the church they don't even take it serious anyways they just go there to do something on their Sundays or they had a bad week and they're feeling depressed so now they want to go to church and you go there and you're just absorbing all that energy sometimes it's just better for you to do your own thing maybe work out have a conversation with God get your Bible out read some scriptures meditate on on his word maybe do a fast that will connect you a lot more than going to a church with a bunch of individuals who are dry spiritually and listen i'm not throwing shots i'm just saying 99.9 .9 percent of us have found god through trials and tribulations or a dark chapter inside of our life and we had nothing left we exhausted all our options so we were open to that message because we like principles we like morals we like discipline and that's what led me to the bible every scripture that i applied to my life i felt better i like the discipline i like the man that i became i liked how the degeneracy cleansed from my system and I became a new man. And I did like that and I still do like that. And it holds me accountable to some pretty strict guidelines that I do enjoy. But when it comes to the church, a lot of the times I could just be reading plain scriptures. You don't really get the answers that you need. Or you could just be around people who are giving you false information to where you can't even decipher the truth because you're not going out and gathering it for yourself. You're relying on other people to where that connection can actually fizzle out because you're relying on other individuals to get that truth for you instead of you just building that for yourself. So a lot of the times, if you want to be the teacher, go and get the truth for yourself instead of getting a third party and if you want to get fancy with it go to a church but anyways there's my take on that now it's time to go and hit the gym today is supposed to be a solidified leg day but i decided i'm going to opt out of that as well because i've just recently came back into working out and when i'm getting back into it i like to just build that momentum and get addicted to it and build that love for working out because when i'm getting back into working out i don't have the energy that i need to necessarily hit a crazy leg day and i'm not that motivated or inspired to really get back into bodybuilding to where i'm even intrigued or interested in hitting legs and it's just demotivating so usually the first month when i'm getting back into working out i'll hit only upper body so i can get that passion and that love back for lifting weights and then i become addicted listening to hard style drinking pre-workout when you just start working out or you start working out again your body is not used to dishing out that much energy and it's going to be miserable you're not really going to enjoy the process it's going to take discipline until that love and addiction starts to kick in and then once your body starts getting used to the routine you will be able to expel a lot more energy and you'll be more motivated and excited to hit the gym and you'll be used to going more intense and then that's when you start dropping the legs in there. Okay, when I was younger, I had a massive pre-workout addiction due to like the Z's era and the whole aesthetics thing that was going on. Like everybody was just blasting pre-workout and that was the whole hype. Just blast pre-workout, listen to hard style, listen to great music, go for a PR and have a great workout. But this time that I'm like introducing myself back into working out, I don't want to get hooked to pre-workout. Just because I am upping it in age, I'm acting like an old grandpa. I'm 24, but I don't want to be spiking my heart rate every single day with some crazy pre-workout loaded up with caffeine.
of feed. So I got some natural pre workout It's an energy fizz, ginseng fizz stick, tart cherry flavor. It's not that noticeable. You can put like two of these in your cup. And these definitely don't have as much caffeine as pre workout but it always does the job and it will spike your energy because your tolerance isn't at the ceiling. So you get a healthier dose, but it still does something because your tolerance is still low. And after a while, you could add two packs and it's still less caffeine than pre workout Maybe even three packs in the future if you're not feeling it and you're feeling spicy and you're feeling crazy. And we're going to start and finish this legendary chest workout with some C's playlist, of course, a classic. We're also going to have some Greg Plitt inspiration videos butting in now and again, just to really draw and pull that inspiration out of me into the weight. Focus on the positive energy of the pain. That pain is letting you know you're fixing something that's insufficient in your life. You can get some hard hits in and it won't fall over, but when you pretend to act cool for a camera, it always falls over. But it is a good bag, I won't lie. In the entirety of my life, I can never throw a kick to save my life, but ever since I started incorporating stretching into my workout, definitely an older person type of thing, because when I was younger, I would never stretch. I'd just jump into my workouts and go crazy. I still kind of do that, but when it comes to stretching my legs, I like to do that just so I can get a good high kick in because it feels awesome. So I highly recommend stretch the leg, kick the bag. This is the only cardio that will be fun in your life. Treadmills, huh? Running on a bike, huh? Hitting a bag, huh? Movable bag, that's your height. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> Reviewing this footage and watching it back, in the moment, I thought I was him. I thought I was on fire throwing them John Jones combos. Watching this back, it's definitely the opposite. I have some orangutan form, and it just looks like a sloppy technique, and it's always been that way. I have a very unorthodox style. It's kind of, I need to win, and I feel desperate, so I'm going to do whatever I have to do, and that's what it's always been since high school. But disclaimer, fighting resolves absolutely nothing. It's just for younger individuals who want to boost their ego. When I was a kid, I would always get my ass kicked by my brothers all the time for everything and I would just be that little puss who would instigate things and be like haha that's all you got that's all you got and I was very cocky and that translated into high school to where I was a loud mouth and kind of egotistical and the only reason I was getting into altercations is because I had a loud mouth and none of it was worth it nothing was resolved besides boosting my ego so I could go into another harmful direction or another fight because my head was inflated and everybody hated me and it resolved absolutely nothing in fact I probably have a worse memory because I got hit in the head so many times and the most important thing is your brain but as a teenager I feel like we all do it you go to these huge parties and everybody's acting a fool and then they want to see who's the toughest guy or this that and the third and you just are involved in those situations and if you happen to scrap a lot then you're like the main character who's just causing more havoc and it's just a not the greatest way to live man you're missing the wrong two cats here man oh, how you feeling man, you <laughs> hey shit we're in a little predicament I'm between you and death you're trying to go to sev man I oh. <laughs> Oh, you better go. Oh, where you at, man? Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's about to get the... It takes a stronger man to walk away. It's totally not worth it. You will never gain anything from that or resolve anything from that. And the only reason you're in that bad situation with somebody who's bad-mouthing you is because you are a fool who decided to act up as well, and now you're in this position. But it is a great form of cardio. And now the last time, this is completely irrelevant, but I do have the video. The last time I fought was at work. Some kid who was quite young, he was 21, was bad-mouthing me at work. And for some reason, I kind of got in my feels a little bit, but I definitely wasn't going to fight it. But then we just decided on the drive back that we were going to fight for fun. Like, there really wasn't that many emotions tied to it. We're just like, you know what? Like, I got to practice. I got to sharpen my skills. So if you want to do this, let's do this. And it definitely is a young man's game. He had a bunch of energy. And I just felt fat. I felt sluggish. I felt slow. Not like my younger self at all. And I'm like, oh my God, I am so out of shape. Like, it is definitely a young man's game. When you get older, you leave that to the teenagers. You just use your words. Because when you get older, trust me, you're energy depletes and you're just not the same. I was expecting to come out and be so explosive like I was when I was in high school when I was younger and it was just not that. It was slow. It was sluggish. I was gassing. I still got the job done and I still resolved nothing at all. Like the kid was cool. Could have just had a conversation. Probably would have been a lot smarter to this day without those punches to the head added to my resume. But hey, boys will be boys. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
vlogging like it's 2017, a little throwback, but now we're in the kitchen, and this is kind of sort of where the gains are made. I have went on dirty books, I have ate trash food, and I still got really, really jacked because my work ethic surpassed my diet. The diet does provide a lot of great energy. You're not sweating or just feeling sluggish or slow to where you can get greater workouts, and you do build more optimal muscle, and you're not adding on excessive fat or breaking down muscle or losing muscle. You just eat clean, and you'll have clean energy. You'll feel good in the gym. Pumps will be great. You want to be optimized in every single department. Back in the day, it was quite different. It was just all about the microwave, fast, quick, and simple, and I'd be out the door. On to the next task. You do one rep and you're sweating and you're just stinking from all these chemicals and disgusting processed foods and your body smells. You don't even have the energy to get through a full day optimally. But now it's different. I take my time and I take care of my body. But yeah, since I already ate before I worked out, I'm going light. We're going to start with the base. And yeah, rice is very deceiving. You could put a teaspoon in here and it'll fluff up to the top. So just a little bit because I'm not that hungry. Let's add a little bit of syrup, not too much, just to add some flavor. So it doesn't have that fishy taste and it's kind of sweet. Now let's add some spices that smell like they would taste good on a fish. <laughs> What's up? Some people go overboard on the seasoning just so they can prove a point that they know what they're doing. But you really just want to go light with everything. Now this sauce does not belong on a fish at all, but it honestly, it suits it quite well. I don't want to overdo it. Okay, just a little bit, relax. It's simple, it's clean, it's mean, and it's ready for me. Let's go, baby. This Bryce Hall stated who he wants next as well. Honestly, KSI, Deji, Austin McBroom, any of those pussies can get it. They won't do bare knuckle, but if you want some pillows on your hands, I'm down. Okay, that was actually really good, and that was worth my time. I'd give it an 8.5. Okay, now I'm going to spend about half an hour just reading some scriptures. And the funny thing about this Bible, I found it in a back alley when I was going through a dark period of my life. And I figured out, after getting 400 pages deep in this Bible, that this is a Jehovah Witness Watchtower Bible. I thought this was the truth. It said New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. And when I picked this up, I thought it was a translated Bible that was easier to read. But it's quite the opposite. It's completely different stories inside of it. It's translated wrong. It's just extremely annoying. So I'm getting steered wrong in this direction. Mormons were steering me wrong. And that's why God has always just been a personal connection with me. And that's as far as it needs to go. Because everybody has agendas. Or they want to sway you towards their opinion or their worldview. Or they're going to speak like a half-truth that resonates with their heart. Like, just find the truth for yourself and go at your speed. Go at your pace. But yeah, I'm just gonna spend 30 minutes reading this just to edify myself on the word, meditate on the word, and also just to ground myself. The Bible is a great place to ground yourself, get some good morals, get some wisdom, get some good principles inside of your system so you're not acting like a fool or a degenerate out in this world. And this book, well not this one specifically, but the Bible, if you read through it, it will mold your perspective like some putty to where you see life in a whole different lens, where you act different, to where you talk different, to where you move different. And this world definitely needs to talk different, to move different. A lot of people are just gung-ho, crazy, egotistical, and wild to each their own, but living like that, you will just fall in traps and pitfalls and do a lot of self-sabotaging and find yourself in very destructive situations. I thought it was over, got out of plans, yeah. took my life, laid it down, placed it in his hands, yeah. I thought it was over, got out of the plans, yeah.